Good morning, and welcome to the Weekly Shot No Filter. This is Kathy Harrington sitting in for Keith Robinson, and uh, we're excited today uh, to be showing you a demo of the Client Connect email marketing platform. So um, you guys have been waiting for it for a while. We released Module 1 with the CRM uh, a while back, and now we are excited to be uh, uh, launching uh, the Phase 1 of the email marketing platform. So with me today is Joe Manning, our new Director of Technology. Welcome, Joe. Hello. Thank you. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello, radio world. <laughs> so uh, Joe is going to be uh, starting here. Uh, basically, we're not taking you through a PowerPoint. We are going to go live on Client Connect. Um, and we're going to be going through a couple different phases of the email marketing platform. Um, we're going to talk about how to do single emails. We're going to talk about how, you, how to add your own agent branding and photos uh, to your emails. Um, we're going to be talking about lists and how to then send those emails, um, templates, um, campaign analytics, um, which is where you send your campaign and then you take a look back and say, ha, huh, who got it, who opened it, what's my, what's my tracking on that, which is very important, uh, and really great information on the Tribus system. They've got a, we've got a lot of great analytics. And then we're going to take you into the builder. And the, I'm excited about the builder because this is something we have not had uh, before in WebTop where you go in and you actually can choose uh, you know what you want your email to look like from scratch, really from the ground floor. And Joe is going to take you through how to build an email with the builder uh, right there. And then we're going to talk about our bug contest. So that's an outline of today's show. So let's go ahead and take it away, Joe. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, with me, I actually, we should probably introduce Eric. Eric, say hi real quick. Everybody knows. Hey, how's it going? Everybody knows Eric Thomas. He is the famous trainer we have here who comes to your office and does magic over there. He solves your problems. So like Kathy said, we're going to start out. Um, we're covering mostly marketing today. So let me just, uh, I'm going to be doing some weird screen stuff here. So I'm going to switch to Client Connect here. I'm going to make this, oh, let's see here. I'm going to log in. So first of all, I should probably say that I'm logging in as, as like, you know, the administrator here. So I might have some stuff on my screen that you might not have. But um, don't really worry about that. You guys are going to have the marketing tab today. So that's what matters most. <clears throat> so it's logging in. Another thing to talk about when you, um, when you log in is, uh, is showing the agents their analytics, right? Yeah, and how the gra how graphically they they appear. Sure. So, I gotta close that right there, yep. so I can see more on the screen. Okay, okay. So, this is the new hotness right here. This is the marketing tab. So I'm just gonna click on it and just start. So, the thing, oh, actually, I think we're gonna do the single emails first. Yeah, let's do the single let's, emails. Let's cover this. Let's let's uh, mix it up a little. So. The marketing dashboard. You'll see that there is um, templates and campaigns and lists right here. This is marketing. Everything you need to do inside marketing is, is all right here. And then you have your analytics for your marketing campaigns. Before I, I dig any deeper into this, I really, I mean, this is a huge deal. If you've ever paid for a service like MailChimp or anything like that, this is pretty much what you're paying for. Is to see, Constant contact. Yeah, any yep. of that. It's to see what people are opening, see what people are reading, what they've clicked, any of that. It's like you're paying for most of that and it's included in the system. Um, now I want to back up just to the single uh, one-off emails. So what's really cool about this is some of our trainings, we've already demonstrated you know, how to send one-off emails from the system, but we never uh, really, nobody got to do anything with it. So I'm just going to go ahead, since I can see a lot of text here, I'm just going to test items in here. So I have a lot of goofy names. Let's see here. Joe Gmail. So let's click on Joe Gmail. So inside here, you can see the contact. We're all pretty familiar with this. Latest activities, I think that's what I want to do, yeah. So latest activities, I can hit create and then choose email. And I don't know if you guys had access to that before, but now this is how you send a one-off email to one of your contacts. You'll see that I have the recipient name here. I can write a subject. I can start typing text inside here. But what I really want to show you guys is that I can use a template. So I'm going to pick one of these templates here. Um, let's see here. I think we had Urban Bridge. I guess we'll use that. We used that one before. But now I clicked it, and I don't see anything. So 
You know, these are kind of like little things that you might go, where did it go? Well, I need to click on HTML content and it should show up. There it is. So what do you see here? You see some text, a banner, a, a title, some body message. You see my photo. You know what photo that is? That's my Gravatar. So it pulled my Gravatar, which you can kind of see up here in the top right. It's the same Gravatar that's, on, that's set up for my profile. It pulls it into here. It pulls my name, my title, my phone numbers, my emails, my address, anything that's inside there. And I'll, I'll explain that a little more, like what, what, how does it get decided what's put inside there. We have some like mail merge type codes that we put in the templates to, sh to do that. So now I can send a, um, a, a message to Joe Gmail. Hi, Joe. And then I can go ahead and just send that off. I can attach a... I can touch in a file, maybe I had a PDF or something. You can include media, you can include a link here to um, to your, you can include a link to your blog. Oh, I think um, we're having screen issues. All right, hang on a second here. Hold, hold please. Oh, sound no picture, okay. Okay guys, we're we're seeing that we're not sharing the screen, so. That's a bummer. I gotta start over. It shows. It says it says we can see the screen. It's hmm. showing PowerPoint. Let's close that. What was that? Hmm. Oh, forgive us, everybody. This is the first time that we are doing the screen setup a little differently, so it's. We're bound to run into issues here. Let's see. This this happened uh, before when we were doing another webinar. So I'm going to share just this window. What do we see here? Thank you. We're getting a lot of feedback. We're able to see the PowerPoint. but nothing. You're not alone. Yeah. It's, it's a universal issue. If you're not seeing the screen right now, it's because... We're having some technical difficulties, so. Go to meeting. It's go to meeting's <laughs> fault. Don't, don't you love technology? You know technology. we all do this once a week, if not more. We know what we're doing. All right. What's going on here? Can't see the screen. Wrong screen, wrong screen, wrong screen. Okay, yeah. See the mouse moving. What do you guys see right now? Desktop? That's so weird. All right, hang on a second. Well, now, we see, now we're seeing internet. Now what you're seeing is the, the desktop. If I load that back up, what happens there? That's really weird. It's showing, it's not showing the browser. <clears throat> and we did this last week and it worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's It true. worked just fine. Hmm. That's so weird. Hmm. And it's not that. Yeah, I already tried that. Screen too We're trying screens, folks. We're All right, I'm going to uh, is... give us like uh, two minutes here. I'm going to do something here.
Okay, everybody, we're back. We got a browser to show up, and I'm mistyping stuff. Thank you very much for your patience. Uh, it, it wasn't sharing our web browser for some reason, so us IT guys all had to come in here and, and look at it. I had to get the big brains around this. It took everybody. We had a help desk guy come in here real quick. All right, so let's just start over. Um, I apologize for that issue there. Uh, we'll, we're, gonna, we're recording all this, and I'll go ahead and edit all this out. So um, we're covering a lot today. Uh, let's just get going here. So I'm going to log in. Maybe actually if someone wants to confirm that it's working now, that'd be awesome too. Just what are you seeing? Yeah, do you guys see the login screen? You should be seeing the Tribus login screen. Working, it's working, it's working. All right, okay, thank great. you so much. Thank you. Okay, let's do this again. So I'm going to log in. Um, I forgot my password. I'm a little, a little off now. Let's see. That's why we got Eric Thomas in here. He's, he's our backup in case uh, everything goes crazy. In case Joe dies. I'm prepared. In case I die right now. In case Kathy kills me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Whew. All right. So let's. Um, Thank goodness. Got it back. The stuff we're covering today, uh, single emails. We're going to cover Gravatar real quickly. The marketing tab, lists, autoresponders, templates, campaigns, analytics, the builder tool, which is really cool. And we're going to talk about bug contests also. Uh, let me just clear some of this out so I can actually see some of the feedback. We have a, a lot of issues, and I want to be able to read your current questions, not all the issues we're all having. Right. Feel free, as, as we go through this demo, guys, feel free to um, send in your questions. We may end up doing a kind of a Q&A at the end, depending upon what the question is about. So if you don't get your question answered right away, um, don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll get to it. All right, so I just need to, I don't think I'm ever going to get to the bottom of this list, so we'll just scroll to the bottom and hope you'll see stuff. All right, so let's uh, start. I think before I started with, uh, I started with the marketing tab, I'm going to just go back to the single emails right now. So I'm going to go to my contacts here. While that's loading, I'm going to delete some more of these. So your single emails, these are going to be the emails that you will you'll open up. Uh, basically, whether you're you know, Mason McDuffie, Tri-Valley, Baha'i Co., Wine Country, um, your specific branded email templates will show up in your system. Um, you'll be able to click on an individual email. <clears throat> that might be something you want to send to someone uh, that came to your open house. Maybe you want to send a link about an interesting article that, that you saw about a particular community. Um, but these are these sort of map to the email stationery that we had um, on WebTop. And so we're going to have another number of different examples or samples for each brand uh, for you to use. Absolutely. So <clears throat> right here I'm looking at the, the contact detail page, which we've gone over in Module 1 training. And I just want to uh, remind everybody that if, if you haven't done Module 1 training, you're really missing out on kind of what we're, where we're picking back up with right now. And Module 1 training was a CRM. It was the CRM. I mean, this is the whole thing is the CRM, but really module one training was like contacts, your dashboard, what we're doing right here, uh, setting up your profile, your gravatar, all that stuff you need to just start going um, and while you're waiting for the marketing component, which we're releasing today. Um, the contact detail page has these portlets inside it. And in the latest activities portlet, I'm going to go hover over create, and then you see email. It shows up. Let's see. We're also looking at a lot of questions right here. So I'm going to click on email. Uh, weird issue of sound. Talk more into the mic. Oh, I'm, I'm like eating the mic right now. So I, I don't know how much more I can talk into it, but I hope that works. I can also pick it up more because I am the mixer guy. I know exactly what I'm doing. Here we go. How's that sound? All right. So we're looking at uh, also, if, if, if uh, everybody has issues with the sound, uh, chime in. If it's just one person, most of the time it's just um, it's go to webinar. So here we go. We're looking at a one-off email. You can you, you can see your contact that you're sending it to. You can start writing your message. But what we really want to demonstrate, and which we were demonstrating before we just everything went crazy, is that you can pick a template. Here's my, I click HTML to, uh, content, but you can pick a template here. Let's do a different, let's do Grass Ventura Barnett. So inside here, I chose the Ventura Barnett template. I'm looking at HTML content. One of the things I showed earlier is that you might see this, you might see nothing here. And what you need to do is click on HTML content to see that template. 
Uh, and that might be something we will we'll switch up in the future. So what you're seeing here is a, a branded banner, a message title here, and the, the body of the message, my Gravatar, my signature, and all of this is pulled in from my profile page. So if you have a Gravatar set up, then it will automatically be pumped into this template. And, and all this information here will be uh, also included in the template in the signature area. So basically that's why we say in module one to really fill out your profile because this is where that data is going right here. So I can send off one, uh, one message here. Let's do it. Uh, hey, Joe. And I, I could fill out more, but we're, we're playing a little bit of catch up here. So. Uh, also, you can add an attachment if you want to add, I don't know, a marketing report or some, some type of documentation, yeah, some file, a flyer, anything like that. So I'm going to hit send, and then it's going to go to that Joe's um, Gmail. But what's cool is that inside latest activities, it will show, it'll show my recent, recent message. So let's see, today's the 7th. So it'll take a minute to re refresh, but eventually you'll see these um, the, the the message that you sent out to that contact. So this is some testing I think I was doing uh, in, over the weekend, and you can see that if I click on this, you can see the message I sent off. Now I didn't put anything in it because I was just doing some testing there, but you can take a look at all the messages you sent to this one contact right inside the system, inside the latest activities portlet. So I think that's really useful. The next thing we want to cover is the Gravatars real quickly because if you're wondering why why your photo isn't showing up inside there it's because you didn't set up a Gravatar and we cover, we have a Gravatar video but I just want to quickly remind everybody and demonstrate and Gravatar.com go ahead yeah so as far as getting your photo in um, it, how, how Gravatar works is that you set up a, you go in there you sign in it's free um, and Gravatar enables you to upload an image into it, and then every single time you go, you you create a new online account, whether it's you know, any social media accounts or whatnot, it pulls in that photo from Gravatar. I personally set up a Gravatar account about five years ago, and I have never had to upload another photo to any site. It automatically pulls it LinkedIn, wherever. So Gravatar is cool. Um, like uh, like Joe said, there's a quick two-minute video on how to set up your Gravatar. Please, folks, um, you don't use a photo that is older than five years mm -hmm. old. We don't want your high school shot to appear in your emails right. uh, on the, on the Client Connect. Um, What's really good about Gravatar is that what, if you set it up once here, you can go to all, all sorts of websites. You could be commenting on a blog, and the email you use in that comment will reflect the Gravatar you have set up inside Gravatar.com. Same thing for, for uh, Trulia and Zillow, any, any accounts you have there with email addresses. If you have a Gravatar tied to that account, then it'll automatically show up your uh, show your photo. So, for example, you see this uh, personal email here, and another personal email. But right down here is a work email I have, and that's the photo that it pulled into Client Connect. Now I can change that photo to another. Uh, Kathy doesn't like any of my photos, so I can change it to this one. And, uh, I don't know what what's going to make her happy. I think this stock photo right here is, is going to really <laughs> yeah, that's just. Good. Yeah, that's good, Joe. That's great. So I can, but I can do so much in here. So I have multiple. I'm controlling multiple uh, accounts inside inside one login. And this is gravatar.com. G r a v a t a r dot com. Yep. And 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 once again, go watch the training video. You know, don't don't just start right here and, and just go to the browser unless you're super savvy. But we have we have a really good video on how to do this. Um, our YouTube channel is youtube.com forward slash MMRE training. Go to that. You'll see you know, module one training that we recorded. You'll see uh, the Gravatar. You'll have importing <coughs> contacts. What else, Eric? Yeah, I'll show you. Yeah, and we're going to be uploading videos on an ongoing basis. Um, Eric and Joe are doing videos basically on, on everything having to do with Client Connect. In fact, we have today's training already up there, right? The marketing. The, everything is, is sectioned out. So we have list section out. We have templates. We have campaigns. Pains, we have it all. The idea under. is that we'll have short videos, no 10 minute videos, we promise. You know, two and three minute short videos on how to do a particular, uh, uh, you know, thing, task. We promise we'll try to keep it short. Keep it short. <laughs> Sometimes we, a short video ends up being, being a lot longer. So here we are, the MMRE training page. Um, we have a lot of videos. There's a lot of recent ones inside here. 
Websites, so let's go to the bottom. Gravatar is right down here, module one, advanced contact search, importing contacts. Uh, there's just lots of content on here and we're adding more, uh, at least one video a week, I would promise you for sure. Um, and Eric's all over that. He's, he's basically just taking this and running with it. So, oh, I just got the, the email from Ventura Barnett. Should we look at that? Should we see what that looks like? Do you want to do it? Okay. Well, I'll tell you right now that it fits. It's, I'm looking at the email I sent with the grass banner, and it looks great in my mobile. That's where it just showed me um, that it came through. So anyways, let's get back to the, the, um, the marketing component of this. So we went to Gravatar. You guys should all have your uh, Gravatar set up. Now let's talk about the marketing tab. So right here is the tab that is the newest feature for the system right now. And I'm going to go ahead and click on this. <laughs> As we said at the beginning of the show that got where everything went crazy, these analytics here is really one of the best features about this system because you have you have stats on, on all of your campaigns and if we drill down in the future into campaigns we can see individual campaign statistics also. But if you want a kind of a top down view of how everything's going, you can see you know how many new subscribers, how many people are opening this, how many people are clicking, the call to action. Um, just lots of really good data inside here. Right. So, for instance, when you send your market report campaigns out, um, you know, down the road when those are out next month or end of this month, um, you'll be able to see if you're sending out the Contra Costa market report or Alameda market report, you'll be able to track um, your open rate, your click-through rate, um, which is really great information. Um, and so, again, overall performance is, is very important. The other thing, too, is look at the list growth, right? One of our goal, one of your goals should be to grow the CRM, grow your database on an ongoing basis. So how many, how many new subscribers you've got um, uh, versus existing. Um, part of this is going to be as, your, as you get leads in through First Alert and through your mid-level registration from your websites, when we launch those, um, you'll also be able to see your list growth. So that's another important metric. So, so uh, I'm, I got my eye on the, the questions coming in. Some people don't have access to the marketing tab. We just need to swip, flip that on. It's in the system. The marketing component is in the system. We need to activate it. If you are following along, maybe you've got two screens or you're, or you're, you're listening and following along, um, and you don't have access right now, I recommend you just kind of watch the show. We're recording this. This is more of a demonstration, not a training right now. So I'm just kind of going through all the features and, and, and what the, the pros are of all of these features. So the marketing tab or reports or any of that, um, we're, we're going to have it on by the end of the day, I think, because maybe even sooner. I'll, I'll light a fire under my team and we'll all get it going because it's there right now. Uh, we're, what we're doing, the reason why you might not see it is because we're working with separating the groups out, um, you know, JVs and your offices. We're, we're putting everybody in the proper category right now, so that's why uh, marketing might not be visible. So if you're just following along, watching, the next step is, that I'm going to show you is lists. So I'm gonna, I can either click on lists or this drop down and create a new list. First thing I'm going to do is just going to show you guys all of the lists. So I don't think I have my own list here. Let's take a look. Yeah, I don't. So this just kind of shows you all your different lists. You can have a buyer list, um, newsletter. You could have a ge geographic farm list. Geographic, yeah, if you had a certain, like, we always demonstrate Danville. Right. Because I'm from Danville, I guess. Right, this is right. why I always use that. So I'm going to, this is just showing you what every single list name is. It's, you're going to learn a lot more by just going to create a list. So I'm going to give this list a name. I'm going to call it, uh, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to call it Danville Buyers. And then you can put a description in here, list of all Danville buyers. Here's a fun fact. Danville is an anagram. Did you know that? Mm -mm. What's an anagram? An anagram <laughs> means you can take the letters and rearrange it, and it spells something else. If you can tell me what that anagram is, I'll give you $5. <laughs> I, I will. I, I, I paid you a dollar for finding my spelling errors. Okay, so... What I'm doing right now is I'm filling out what the defaults are going to be for this list. So anytime I send it, it's going to say from Joe Manning, from Joe Manning at BHG Home. Anyone can subscribe is something I do not want. What this actually, you're going to want to leave this unchecked. What that means is um, if, if someone goes to manage their subscription preferences, your list will be visible 
Land Evil. Oh, I owe someone five dollars. Ah. You're, I mean, you you basically got it. It's Evil Land. <laughs> Gary got it too. Yeah, well, it's a small town. We got bored, you know, going to high school there. We think of we have a lot of time. Vile Land. Okay, I like that too. Good job. Good participation. That's great. Yeah. All right, we're having too much fun here. Anyone can subscribe. Just don't check it. Basically, if you check it, other people can, when they manage their subscriptions, they can see that. And, and maybe that's something we'll take note of and see if we can just kind of remove that functionality altogether. So I'm going to hit save. Um, did I spell dangly out? Okay. Oh, I got a badge. I'm going to post it to profile. So what we're looking at now is the list I just created. You'll see campaigns, recruits, autoresponders, campaigns. This would show you like what campaigns you have tied to this list. Uh, you have performance analytics for this list. Dental is definitely not evil land. Yeah, that's true. That's very nice there. I was raised there. So what we what we need to do with lists is there's so much you can do. You can basically add individual users or contacts, or you can add, have a report, which we're kind of covering a, in a later training and automatically feed this list. So if I was to try to visualize over the radio what you do, you basically can have uh, reports feed lists and lists feed your campaigns. Very simple um, stuff if you were just to look at MailChimp or something like that. They have lists that feed their campaigns. So it's very similar, um, but it's more advanced for us because we have the reports component, which actually allows you to go and automatically pick up anybody that that is has the client type of buyer or something like that. Okay, so a list is their individual list for any niche, any geographic area, yep. and yep. should be, um, you know, really categorized based on how they want to communicate with their particular, you know, groups. Um, it's very similar to groups in WebTop. Gary, you have a question. Uh, name and description basically redundant in the list. So what he's talking about, I'm going to go back and edit real quick. The the name is basically what you see when you're looking at all of them. The description is just a little extra. I would say description is really for your own individual categorization. It, it's not really for anything functional. I think the name is definitely important. That's why it's the only required field inside here. So let's go back. What I want to do is add someone to this list because this is what you need to know. So we're just going to get right into that. Uh, from contacts, so I hovered over add contact recruit. Um, if you see recruits right now, I think a lot of people are seeing recruits. Uh, that's for managers and uh, eventually once we figure out the marketing or get the marketing thing uh, tab squared away, we're going to get rid of the recruits for people that don't need to see it. So from contacts recruits and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this plus sign right here and I'm going to add, what is it, that Joe Gmail guy that I had as my tester, uh, Gmail. My system takes a little bit longer because I'm like, I have the super admin level access. It's filtering through everything. So I'm just going to click on Joe Gmail right there, and it's going to add them to this system. So that's a list. There are multiple ways to add people to these lists. What I'm going to do is unlink or de uh, delete them from this list. And I'm going to show you another way to add people to a list. So I'm going to go back and look. I'm going to go to my contacts and click on Joe Gmail and add him to the list that way. I have a little shortcut because he is recently viewed here. So I'm going to click on Joe Gmail. And then I don't know if you guys remember in module one, but one of the portlets is a marketing list down here. So if, you, if, if I went too fast, I went to contacts and then I went to a, a contact detail page and then one of these portlets which I particularly have just down here at the bottom I can subscribe Joe to a list from right here also so you don't have not everything is done in just one place and I think that's really important to remember so uh, what was that list that we called Danville buyers mm -hmm. there it is so now Joe's on the Danville buyers list sounds like Dallas buyers club <laughs> Danville buyers club all right so we added Joe that way. I mean, there's so many other ways. Um, well, okay, I think there's maybe just one more way, but I like saying so many. So we could click a checkbox next to a contact and then selected. We're going to hit, uh, we're going to hover over subscribe and then hit selected. And we can then add mm. this contact to <clears throat> another 
marketing list. There it is. I started typing. It predicted it for me. Danville Buyers. Now Steve Barnes is on this list. You could check a lot of them at once. You could do an advanced search, uh, which we demonstrated in a video, and you could actually search for people that have the tag buyer and that have the city Danville in your advanced search, and then it shows just those people, and then you can select all of them and add them to that list. So there's lots of different ways to to work with lists. Um, so let's just uh, skip back to. Let's see, what else do we got here? We got so then you can responders. send an email to one person or you can send it to an entire group. Absolutely. That's I mean that's how all of this is, is set up right now. One person or a whole group and, and their lists are really powerful. Um, there's one other thing that you can do in lists, which I'm not gonna go over like training wise, but I wanna show you guys. Let's see. You can also schedule an email here. This is one of the features yeah, that I really like. Is that yeah. instead of just having to send it right now, you can say, you know, I'm going to be away on vacation, but I want to make sure that I'm sending my weekly email out, or, or you're going to be out when it comes time to, um, you know, to send out um, a particular communication. Then you can go ahead and schedule it for next Tuesday at 3 a.m. or whatever you want. To do. Absolutely. And on a similar note, I'm going to talk about autoresponders right here, real quickly. What an autoresponder does is is Based on when someone adds you to, uh, or when you add someone to a list, it'll automatically send them a welcome email. So you add someone to your buyer's list, it automatically shoots out an email. You have to set that up, of course, but you, there's so much functionality. So I'm going to go to create inside here and inside the autoresponse uh, portlet. So you set, you have a trigger, you can say subscription to a list, or maybe they unsubscribed, and now you want to send them a, you know, we're sorry to see you go kind of email. There's a lot you can do inside here. Uh, this is basically how the drip emails are going to be built um, or structured. We're already building them right now. Um, so there's, there's a lot you can do. Enable tracking, you can choose a template for it. So if you have a, a template built like a we're sorry to see you go template, then you can you choose that. So there's autoresponders. We're going to probably have a whole video, I think. What do Definitely you think, on yeah. autoresponders, yeah, yep. Absolutely. I mean, there's so much functionality in there. Uh, what are the odds that a group mail gets past our client spam filters? Okay, so a spam question. This is a great question. Um, right now, we are using the Mandrill, which is the, sp uh, the mail server that MailChimp uses. And in my experience, and, and I think we all agree here, that MailChimp is the big dog in mail and, and avoiding spam. It very and best practices. Best practices. Now, if that's not good enough, we actually, well, it depends on not just good enough. If you're sending out a lot of emails. You can go and get your own free Mandrill account, and we have a training video on how to set that up. And what that means is you plug in a couple settings inside your profile, and you, can, you get your own uh, batch of 25,000 emails a month. And you're running on your own server. You're not worried about the credibility of the other agents that you're working with, or maybe they're spamming, or maybe they're sending out a lot or getting flagged. You're totally standalone, and it's free. So if you if you've been to any of Rich Rich's trainings, Rich Cass's trainings, where he's talked about go to datadepot.biz mm -hmm. and get a hundred thousand names. This is what you want to do. You Absolutely. want to set up a free Mandrill account. You do not want to upload those email lists into your Client Connect account, or it would break the system. Yeah, it, it wouldn't <laughs> break the system. It would hurt everybody. It would hurt everybody. Yeah. It would hurt everybody. And and I know it's gonna. It's probably gonna happen anyways. But we're and we're gonna have to work with it. But uh, right now, the best thing to do is go to uh, Mandrill. And I'm not even gonna go into training on that too much, but. Um, the way to think about it is Client Connect is really where you want to communicate with people you know, or people you're meeting, and people who will know you when they see your email. Yeah. Mandrill, Mandrill is the place you want to go if you want to set up, if you want to be sending out thousands of emails to people you do not know. So that's the separation. Yeah, blast, spamming, any of that yeah. stuff. I hate using those words, but, but it's, it's part it's of the business. It's yeah. part of what we do sometimes, um, you know, whether we're doing recruiting or anything <laughs> like that. Um, this is how you want to set it up. So, and and we have a video in there, and, and maybe we'll refine that video a little bit more if this becomes a larger issue. And let's see, we'll 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 cover that later. I wasn't really prepared to cover Mandrill too much today, as far as what time allows. So the the next uh, thing we did, we just talked about autoresponders. Uh, oh, templates. That's what we're going to do next. So I'm going to go back to the marketing tab just to kind of see everything again. And here are the templates. 
Just like list, we could create a template or we can look at all the existing templates. We're going to look at all the existing ones first. So we have, uh, at, at BHG here, we are working on about 754 different templates right now. We wanted to get this out to you guys so you can start sending some messages and start having some, some brand representation in your emails from the system and just get going. So we have about one or two um, like stationary type templates where it has your logo. You saw it when I did the one-off email. I'm going to show you a couple of those right now. There's a couple of those per brand right now. So this is just a green, uh, urban green Mason McDuffie. San Francisco. Yeah. Right. So one of the things I actually want to show you guys is this this weird, crazy text right here. This is the mail merge codes, or another way to think about it is this is your signature right here. So you see first name, owner, last name, job title. Avatar, this is your Gravatar right there. It has large. If you want it smaller, you can make it medium, but you know, ask us first if you want some help with that. So what do agents need to do with that? Can they just ignore it and assume just it's... Just ignore it. Okay. Just start typing right here. Start, start working on your message. Do what you want there. This, let's just pretend it. We don't want to mess with it. And if you, if you want to customize it in some way, you know, call me, ask me. Maybe I can help you do that. Maybe you want a different piece of data inside here. Basically, anything that's inside your profile can be put inside here. It gets pulled automatically. Yeah. So let's say you want to build your own template and you want to include, you know, a second website or, or anything like that. You know, we can, we can include that in here. Uh, you just got to call us, and, and, and we can work with you on that. So be sure before you send out any of these emails that you've got your profile completely filled out, and you've done your Gravatar. That way it pulls the information in. So we got a question here. Will we be able to import our newsletter from Greenhouse into this template? Is Greenhouse an HTML template? Mm, I'm not sure it is. It, no. it, basically, it the, the standard for email marketing right now is, is HTML templates. Um, and what that means is, you know, you got to be able to copy and paste that template in. If you can, I wouldn't be surprised if you could, um, could. But if you if you can, um, then yeah, we can do it. You know, there's a. I'm going to cover that real quickly about how to paste in a template, um, and we'll go into it in more detail. Um, I think it's in the, the create template video. Did you cover that? Maybe. So we we'll probably make a separate video just for that. But it's <laughs> it's actually how I made a lot of these. Uh, uh, the graphic designer Josie and I, we made a lot of these ourselves. Um, we, we built it in one system and we pasted it into here. So that's what you're looking at right now. So let's look at some more templates. Is it very easy to use? Much better than... She says it is. Oh, it is. <laughs> Those are, I, didn't, I was waiting for a question mark. Yes, it is easy to use. Okay, I pulled a, a Ron Burgundy there. All right, so uh, we saw a grass one, Ventura Barnett. There's a Tri-Valley. Let's look at a different one, Tri-Valley Green Home. And just know that you know we're starting out here with uh, with a handful of templates. We're going to continue to build on these and build on these. So when you go in, just know that you're going to have more and more um, you know over the coming weeks and months. So uh, here's a uh, kind of more of a placeholder, but it's a distinctive collection template. We need to actually include the proper branding underneath this. Um, but you know you have like a the finer grayscale uh, colors here, and Kathy's writing something down. She wants me to do something. <laughs> so that's that. We have a, a Highland Partners, Wine Country. Let's see. We saw the bridge. Let's see. Let's look at Tahoe's. You guys are all going to want, hey, I like Tahoe's. Why can't I have one like Tahoe's? That's what's going to happen here. Yeah. So in the future, I should also include that once we get uh, all the groupings uh, taken care of, you're not going to see everybody's template. But as of today, you're going to be able to see like every single brand's template and we're going to clean that up, and you're just going to see yours, so it's going to be a lot easier to use. And the reason why that matters is because with, with 754 different templates, and you had to scroll through all of those, you would go um, nuts having to do that. Yeah. So we're, that's why we're going to you know, pull it back and just uh, section everything else out. So we saw green ones. Um, oh, I guess I can give you a small sample of, of what a, a general newsletter is going to look like. Now, this is actually something that we would do for recruiting. But you'll see that you have a banner at the top, a, a right column, you have some copy, a photo, a schedule, and a, and a signature. Now we are working on refining this right now. Like I said before, you know, we just wanted to get this marketing component out to you guys and show you that we are, we've been working real hard on it on our side and, and doing everything that we could be doing and getting this stuff ready into this system. So this is an example layout of what a newsletter might look like. We're going to be coming out with 
banners, more branding, and, and across the board, whether it's just a one-off email or a newsletter. Yeah, so you'll all have the consumer, you'll have two choices uh, of the newsletter. One, which is the um, ready to go, where the marketing department writes it. Um, but, you know, as you know, uh, the best way to get response from a newsletter is to write it yourself, by far. So we're going to have the create your own newsletter. It'll have the banner. It'll be branded by you, assuming you, you know, you have your profile and your gravatar. And then, um, you know, you can pull in images, and it's very easy to literally click on a section. And we're going to show you that in the builder, where you click on a section and you add copy and content um, to the newsletter. So very, it's going to be easier than our existing newsletter on WebTap, for sure. Easy, yeah. So before we go into the Builder, uh, we just kind of want to show you guys the campaigns. Once again, you can click on campaigns or you can create a new campaign. I'm going to go to campaigns to show you what those, those drilled down analytics are per campaign. We got a question here, when do I see this tab? When is this tab? It's, it's going to be my, my goal, my mission, my task for the day to get that tab to show up for you guys and, and most likely the way I work is going to be you know within a couple hours, so real, real quickly. Um, Let's see here. So we're looking at all campaigns right now. Now, once again, I have a nice top-down view where I can see everybody. I think I wrote down one of the campaigns I can see. Um, but what's really cool about this is you can see the analytics. It might be an empty chart. I'm not sure. So, yeah, normally you would see like a, a really, you know, the same graphs you were seeing before. But you can see exactly like what, you know, what was clicked on, um, the stats per user, not just this though, per person you sent it to, you can see if they sent, opened, or clicked right there. So now you know which person. I think that's really useful. You're like, this guy never opens my emails, but mm -hmm. then he's saying, you know, he's saying he does, or he never clicks my emails, but he's saying he's interested. So there's a, there's a lot of different uses for this, and, and, and I'm a huge fan of it because, I mean, this is what's missing right now is just this tracking of like who is opening this who is and, and maybe you can improve your campaign maybe you can improve the template maybe you can improve the copy inside yeah one of the things that that um, a lot of companies do is they test campaigns right so you may send out an email with a subject line that says uh, uh, read my market report another one may say um, you know, uh, you know, inventory, you know, improving. Uh, you've got to test different subject lines, test different marketing messages, and you know, the great thing is you'll be able to tell which ones perform the best. There's something called A/B testing. It's very, very popular among marketing and user experience and all that. And you, as you, you have two different control groups that you send stuff to and you, and you check the results between the two. You might want to split up your buyers list into two buyers lists maybe and have two different campaigns in those lists and you can see which one performs better. So that's the campaigns. Let's actually go and create a new campaign. I'm going to go back to the, the campaigns list here and hit the drop down. Create campaign. So this is uh, another really uh, powerful part of the marketing component here. So what's the name of this campaign? I think we're going to do um, like welcome to the neighborhood. And then we're going to, uh, let's do it to, I'm going to use my Danville list just because I, it's the only one I remember right now. But so you'll see what populated here, Joe Manning in my email. The reason why it auto-populates is because when we created that list, we were predefining what's going to go in there. I can also change it right now, and I can call it, you know, let's see here, Realtor Joe Manning or something. And you could you could use a different email here if you wanted to. Um, if you have questions about you know sending from emails and, and anything like that, I recommend calling the help desk first. This is really just your display from email, so they'll reply to this if you want to. So let's say I want it to be like you know my realty domain name.com you know maybe i had some special domain even though cuz inside the client connect i'm using my google my company issued, uh, issued google account but i want my marketing to come from this this domain you can do it that way and maybe this domain forwards to your google account uh, once again, you know, talk to the help desk about these kinds of things cuz this is this is their bread and butter is setting this stuff up for you so the next thing I'm going to do um, is I'm going to choose a template first before I go to subject or scheduling. What's up, Kathy? Nothing. Okay. Nothing. I thought you had a question. No. Nope. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose one of these um, Tri-Valley, Green Homes, Newsletter, Highland Partners. That 
that's nice. That's nice. Okay, I'm going to actually, let's see, let's do grass BHG. Okay, so you'll notice that the template uh, changes the subject. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it again. Watch closely. Watch the subject. Grass. Greetings from Bahaiko. Greetings from BHG MMRE. Now that's a placeholder. I'll make it say the official business. Kathy's right, going to freak right. out. Yeah, yeah. Not, like not a great subject line. Yeah, but I could do this now that I have that in there. Greetings from Joe at exclamation. Enable tracking, yes. I don't know when you wouldn't want to track an email. Enable uh, support HTML, yes. That basically means we're going to use a template here. So what we're looking at here. And are those default buttons or do you need to click on those? They are defaulted. Time? Good okay. question, yeah. So what we're looking at here is the same thing. Notice that inside the campaign tool, you don't actually see these things filled out like the one-off email. And maybe that's something. I think they're actually working on fixing that for us so that you see exactly what it's going to look like. But um, just trust me that it's going to be there. I've already we've done lots of tests. And you're going to preview it, so we're going to walk through it and add some things. And you can do a preview when you're looking at templates or building a template. But this is basically your last preview right here before you send it. Uh, the stuff you're looking at here is merge tags. So if you wanted to address someone like a congratulations on your promotion at your company, oh, let's see, put it down here. All right, let's do this. Let's do a very simple hello first name. I got a squirrel. This mouse is super goofy. And now I want it to automatically pick the first name. Pretty simple. Hopefully it just there it is. Exclamation point. So now we all know what this does. We, we've been around computers enough to know that this is going to put the first name inside here. There's so much out, more you can do inside there. You can, For the most part, though, the most basic is your merge tag that you're going to want to add every time, if you're sending it to more than one person, is the first name merge tag. And, and maybe we'll adjust the templates to just default to that. I think we should. Hello, first name. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. Yep. Definitely. I think when I was testing it, I might have done that. And, and, and then after reworking a lot of these templates, uh, it probably went away, so we'll add that back in there. All right, let's take a look at some questions here. Contacts. Oh, contacts, WebTop. Uh, my understanding is that is pretty much complete. Um, I'm going to have to check with the team today, but we they've been working super hard exporting that. We had, uh, I'll tell you right now, we had over 150,000 contacts that we were importing into Client Connect. Mm -hmm about 5,000 at a time. So it was a lot of work, um, and, and I think it should be pretty much done. I'm going to check with the team, so that's a good question. Uh, do, let's see, we'll change our work website. Oh, I think someone just wants to know when's the website ready. That's what it sounds like. When's the web, website ready? So I think we we're, were trying to get that out today, and, and our goal was to get that done today. Um, unfortunately, there's, there's only about three, yeah, there's only about 300 um, websites made right now and we're working on and fixing that out basically we have uh, a lot of accounts that we need to import into that system and get that set up and we're working with a developer to get that going originally marketing was always the module too not websites so we want to make sure we deliver that today and give you what we promised uh, from from day one right so, so stay tuned on websites we will let you know yeah. those will be launching within the next couple of weeks but we will let you know all right before we finish campaigns I just want to show you this send on right here this is really good so you can basically schedule this at any time you want to send this campaign. I want it at 20, uh, the 24th at 2.45 p.m. Or I can set for now if I want to send it right now and I can do that. I'm going to hit Done, Save and Schedule. And it's saving and scheduling. And we, we're looking at the campaign performance right now. So if I just left this open on my computer, um, I could probably hit Refresh every once in a while and see that it was sent to, you know, my Danville buyers because that's the list I use and you can watch the the progress of, of the response time for this and you know how many people opened it all that stuff we talked about so that's campaigns there's a video on that also so if I went too fast there's a video for it and you can pause it and rewind and do all that um, the next thing we want to talk about is the builder tool um, we let's see, let's, let's let it load. so inside marketing I just went back to marketing I go to templates I hover I go to create template I'm going to click on it. 
Plain text, boring. But if you have to send a plain text email, this is where you create a plain text template. Um, use HTML. What this means is exactly what we were talking about earlier about pasting in HTML. So that's how I made a lot of these other templates. We, we built it. I'm a web designer at heart, and I built a lot of those templates um, and then pasted them in. The template builder is what we're here for right now. I'm going to click on create. Now we need to give this template a name. Let's do another welcome to the neighborhood. So that's the name of it. So when I choose a template, that's what it's gonna, how it's going to list. What the subject is for this template is, um, I don't know. Hey, welcome to the neighborhood. Whatever. Oh, someone else just asked about the marketing tab. As Joe said earlier, you'll get the marketing tab um, quickly by the end of the day. That's uh, that's what we're, you don't have it right now. So just follow along, um, and again, know that we're going to be putting uh, videos on the YouTube channel on for each of the things that we're talking about right now, and you'll have that marketing tab soon. Absolutely. So what I did is I gave it a name, I gave it a subject, and I hit next while uh, Kathy was explaining that. So what we're looking at now is these layouts. Now I see a one column, a two column, two columns with strong right, three columns, three columns hero, and a blank one. I don't recommend starting out with a blank one until you're really familiar with this system and done our training a couple times to really get your, your wings there. So I'm going to start with the three column hero. Now you got to keep in mind that this is one of the things that we're also working on. Uh, the builder is a in progress. Um, they are going to include things like automatically placing your logo and your, your branding, your color schemes. And you just base it, it's based off of you know whatever group you're in. So if you're wine country, it's going to choose it for you. And then when you pick this, you hit next. It's going to give you those color schemes and logos and, and branding that you you'd expect inside here. Right now we're working with the the kind of very basic preset templates that the the vendor gave to us that to work with. And and we are the first thing we thought is like this is missing our branding so there it's like the very I think it's gonna be like next week or the or the week after that they'll have that ready but the builder is really cool so I can do all sorts of different things in here what we're looking at here is kind of a preview you'll see all these boxes pop up around you know whatever I mouse over then you see all these things right here these are elements you got buttons dividers plain text images a big title bar rich text you want to do some fancy fonts, headers, footers, dividers. I think it's social media right. icons. Social media icons. Thank you. So that's those are things you can just drag inside here and start working on. Um, there's already a lot of elements inside this template. I can identify them. So this would be a text one. This is an image. This is a title. This is another image. Image, 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 text, title. All of it's inside here. There's social media right here. You can customize these. A lot, and I think what I wanted to do is, should I go back and show them another builder template so they can yeah. see how it's the same thing but just looks different? So I, I was at the three column hero, and I'm going to go to like a two column strong right. It's saying if I did any work inside there, it's going to be lost. So you don't always want to do this, um, but I'm going to. It's basically saying you're going to start fresh with this two column. Hit next. Yes, you can add URL links, Mary. There's a question there. You can add all sorts of stuff. You can add media, you can add links, you can add YouTube, you can add, uh, yeah, just about anything. So what we're looking at here is something very similar. This template is, is set up to be um, a two-column layout. It's got text, a title, social media looks a little different on this one. So real quickly, I think what I want to do is just swap out a logo. Um, so this is an image here. I'm going to hit the, the settings right here. I can either delete this element, I can move it, or I can adjust the settings on it. So I hit the sprocket there and I, I'm, I'm in the image, the element settings now. I'm going to, you see what's in there right now, I'm going to add a logo. Uh, you can upload a logo, you can link it from another website, or you can choose one that's already been uploaded. Uh, let's take a look here. I think I have a logo inside here. I think that's what that one is there. And we can't see it because it's a white uh, transparent PNG image. So <laughs> There it is. Look at that. Beautiful. But what's wrong here? It's blue. So that's that element there. Uh, the settings are done right here. But this whole blue row right here is done on the row controls. So notice element control, 
element control. The whole section right here is row control. So I'm going to hit the sprocket for that. And you'll see that these settings come up for this header, background color, full width. That's why it's going left to right all the way across instead of centered like the rest of the content. And what we're going to do here um, is just change this color. You can pick one if you, if you know the colors. Uh, me, I am such a nerd, I know our company colors, 669933. You won't have to do that. These are going to be uh, green. Um. Hey, if you want to know company hex codes, just email me. I'll send you a whole list of them. It'll be fun. But you don't need to know them because, the, like Kathy said, it will automatically be in there with the, the starter templates once this system gets uh, developed a little more. So I'm going to hit apply, and it should make it green. There it is. So. That's the, how you control that row. Now, if we look back at this a little more, um, I scroll down a little bit here. Yeah, we got text, but I want to explain. I want to explain the sections here and how to control. So everything has a row, mm -hmm. and inside the row are elements. Here's a row. Here's its rows element. Here's a big row with a lot of elements inside it. And if we wanted to, um, I think that's a footer right there. So what, what Kathy wants me to do is demonstrate some text now. So inside this row is a, is a rich text element. You'll notice I'm still in the settings here. It doesn't matter. You can, you can just click. You can just keep moving on. And you're going to click the settings for this. And what are we looking at here? There's rich text. So you can start writing a lot of stuff. Delete the whole thing. You Delete can, the whole thing. Yep. Yeah. Type over it. This and what you may want to do is... Habit. Copy and paste it from a document. Um, yeah. But uh, does, this have, does this have spell check, Joe? Your browser should have spell check in it yeah. if you're using Chrome. Uh, I noticed that there's some weird spelling issues already that are being highlighted. Yep, there are. So you can just go in there and fix those, modify it, apply. Yeah, and if you wanted to add a link, there was a question about a link. So let's highlight love at the end here. Is this the link icon? Yeah, it is. Yep. Insert link. We're going to send them to Google. All right, we're gonna we're gonna look at questions here in just a second. I want to demonstrate this, and we'll keep going. Since there's a lot in development, what do you recommend? Proceed. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, Jim has a question about you know there's a lot in development. What? How? Where should should I wait to start? Should I should I start right now? Am I gonna be missing something if if I miss out on something? I would say get going. Get going on this right now because. What we're releasing today is, is enough to get you to start sending out emails, setting up uh, lists, setting up uh, campaigns, and just doing a lot with the system. Only stuff you're going to be waiting for is some refinement of those templates and refinement of, templates. Of, of, those, yeah. of those lists and campaigns and like the drips. Um, that is the, the very next thing we're working on right now is, is, is the refinement of this stuff right here. Um, but as of today, you can start sending out. Once we enable that marketing tab that a lot of us can't see, um, we're, you're going to be able to get going on it. And that's, I'm going to walk out of here and go take care of that right now. So anyways, we added a, we added a link. We're running out of time. We're, we're basically out of time because of that hiccup we had earlier. So um, I think that's pretty much it. We got the covered the builder. And if, you, if there's a, I think there's a video on just the builder also, right? And if there's not, there's going to be. Um, yeah, there will be, and always uh, the help desk knows a lot about how to use this too, so you can call them and they can help you out with that. The next thing I would do is just hit next, save it, and, and be ready, and I can pick it when I'm choosing my campaign. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to hand it back to Kathy. Yeah, so what I would say is we went over um, sending, off a one, sending out a one-off email. Um, you know, each brand um, has at least one template um, in the system today, so as soon as you get that marketing tab, go in there. And practice, you know, uploading either individual names or your list to send a one-off email. Send it to yourself. Um, you, you can take a look at the, the email analytics. Um, you know how to set up your list. Um, and then set up your autoresponders because um, as, as, uh, as Joe mentioned, you know, want to be, want to be able to send an autoresponder that says, um, thank you for signing up for my list um, and whatnot. So we also need to get that um, uh, video up on the autoresponder. And then for the builder, um, 
play around with that too. I've been playing around with it, and it really does help to just become con conversant with how to add, how to use a sprocket, how to add in content, how to copy content, how to you know plug in your uh, email, uh, your social media websites, and whatnot if you want to display those. So play around with it. We're going to refine it. We're going to be adding more enhancements, um, you know, every day. Um, but don't wait. Uh, just dive right in and just know that uh, it's going to be a build. And uh, we look forward to uh, coming out with uh, more information for you, um, you know, every single week. Um, we're going to have another radio show soon uh, once we get some more of the functionality up and going. Thanks so much for listening, and uh, have a great day. Come out. And, you know, I talked to so what's your it. so what's your recommendation about making it clear as to what logo someone needs to choose? I would say that they don't.